Hello guys, so today we are going to see one of the highly highly requested uh, video. A lot of people was asking me to make a video on the uh, embedded systems uh, roles. What are the different job roles available in embedded system domain? What are the skills needed and what are the companies hiring in the uh, category? So this is one of the very very uh, requested video. Uh, I have tried to explain maximum. Uh, so please keep watching. If the videos are useful, please always consider subscribing because I got a very tremendous response for the VLSI uh, skills, roles and companies hiring uh, video. So I'm expecting something similar. Let's move on to the content of the video. The first one, uh, before even seeing the job roles, I wanted to tell you, like uh, you will be confused, like what are the streams in engineering? What are the branches that are eligible to apply for? Uh, mainly for uh, embedded system related job opportunities. Computer science branch is also eligible because there is a lot of software development involved also. So they are eligible electrical engineering, electronics, uh, electrical and computer uh, engineering. Embedded systems engineering, there is a specific uh, streams in which uh, I have actually uh, taken a master degree. A lot of people do, uh, you know, courses in embedded system. Uh, a lot of people do master degrees in embedded system uh so that stream is also eligible in robotics so uh, electronics is also coming in the uh, electrical and computer engineering category so i have included uh that so all the electronics related streams are eligible electrical stream is also eligible even instrumentation people can also apply and uh computer science and it streams are eligible mainly now uh, it is questionable whether mechanical uh uh, engineers are also eligible for this yeah some companies also uh, hire if it is on the hardware design side uh, but i have mostly seen these branches electrical electronics uh, computer science it branches okay yeah now let's discuss the roles what are the roles available first one is embedded system engineer so it's uh, it's kind of an entry level or a junior uh, category of job role so if you see like embedded systems engineer hiring uh, in any of the companies even even though they ask for like some uh, sometimes one year or two year of experience it's very much considered to be a uh, entry level in the embedded system uh, domain so embedded system engineer uh, in that case the engineer will do the basic software development task supervision and focus on developing skills okay the requirement for the category that is embedded system engineer if you want to be you need to have a computer science or engineering engineering means in that comes electrical electronics instrumentation all those branches uh, you need to have a bachelor degree uh, mostly engineering uh, i'm not sure whether mca people uh, and uh, bsc msc categories are also eligible yes sometimes but mostly they will ask for uh, engineering degrees uh, but obviously if you uh, look into the uh, company site you will get a very clear um, you know idea anyway engineering category people are definitely eligible i think mc category is also eligible anyway uh, it depends on companies to companies so it always changes uh, the programming experience required is cc plus plus or both you need to have some experience in the development of embedded system troubleshooting and real-time operating system very very important rtos is very important when it comes to uh, embedded system so if you want to get into that uh, domain definitely study embedded system hardware software and rtos okay debugging experience is also required let's move on to the next category which is senior embedded system engineer this is like a little bit uh you know after you first become an embedded system engineer then you become a senior embedded system this is kind of a uh what do you say the career growth uh i have included so then you become the senior embedded system engineer. You can also get hired into this category directly if you have some previous experience. So they can analyze complex technical problems, diagnose root cause and find solutions. They are uh, mentoring of, they are, they are mentors of junior engineers. Requirement is all the same requirement as uh, the entry level category. Plus you need to have like seven to eight year of experience in embedded system uh, domain. And you, uh, with more direct work uh, in the range of systems, firmware development, real-time operating system, you need to have a good solid experience to become a senior embedded system engineer. Next comes the principal embedded system engineer. It is the next category. You then become, uh, it, it, it can always change, but this is the general growth uh, of career. 
So this engineer focusing on developing a firmware, they tend to have an extreme anatomy with, uh, and will often be involved in designing embedded systems uh, software. Okay, these engineers usually work and communicate with top leadership. Same as experience, you need to have at least 10 years of, uh, sorry, same as education and you need to have at least 10 years of experience. Next comes the architect, it's a very higher end post. So they uh, take vital decisions about the structure of an entire embedded uh, system and oversees its development. An embedded system architect make high level, uh, high level decisions and coordinate technically requirement for the entire project team. Okay. Now, so these are the roles. First comes the embedded system engineer, then comes senior, then comes principal, then the embedded architect. So this is a general growth of career. It, it happens in a company. If you are getting hired initially, then you go slowly, slowly, you grow to next level. Okay, now the other roles are also available, which you can try as an entry level person, that is embedded system or software engineer, senior embedded system or software engineer, principal embedded system, engineer, chief software engineer, chief technology officer. These are the other roles available uh, in embedded system domain. Now, there are some certifications. I have also included this if you want to know more you can google about it you can get to know like what are the institutions that is offering this and then definitely it will be uh, good to you know add in your resume if you're applying for embedded system jobs now i definitely don't know which are the institutes offering these certifications but definitely you can find some information over the internet certified labview embedded system developer from national instruments it's ni uh, certification next one is certified manufacturing engineer uh, CMFGE from the Professional Membership Organization SME, formerly the Society of Manufacturing Engineers. Next one is Certified Automation Professional CAP from the International Society of Automation. These are some certifications uh, available. You don't need to directly take the certification. You can initially start with some, uh, you know, doing some courses in embedded system. Then you can slowly, if you require, you can take a certification because it involves some cost. Next, let us talk this very, very important thing that is what are the skills needed to become an embedded software engineer? What are the you know soft skills needed, programming knowledge required, all those things we are going to see next. Let's first talk about the software uh, or the programming language requirement. Uh, that is, if you want to get into embedded field, these are the things that, that you have to focus on. Okay, C, C++ programming, microcontrollers, very, very important, or MCUs, microprocessors, Linux operating system, software optimization skill at the system on chip level, SOC, system on chip, real time operating system, as I said in the beginning, device drivers, very, very important, understanding of design patterns and embedded system design patterns. Also, you need to have some debugging skill, ability to work with existing code bases, interrupt driven design, very important, assembly language programming like 8051, 8085, these type of programming with assembly languages, hardware test equipment. Uh, Oslo scope, logic analyzer, if you should have previously worked with. And also very, very, very important experience uh, in or ability to learn communication protocols. When it comes to embedded system, communication protocols plays a very crucial role uh, because if you, if you have studied embedded system books or if you have studied some courses, they always, you know, include these topics. That is I2C, USB, CAN, all these protocols are very, very important. RS-232, uh, RS-485, all these things are, if you have ever learned the Rajkamal text of embedded system, it's all included in that. Next, ability to read the schematic, IoT, basic understanding of IoT, understanding of data structures, Python programming, I'm uh, thinking of starting a, a short course on Python programming. If you are interested, we'll do that soon. Please mention in the comment section if you want. Risk architecture, risk and risk architectures are important. Now, the key skills you need to have is microcontrollers, C, C++, RTOS, device drivers. We have discussed all these. And communication protocols, very important. I2C, SPI, general input, output, microprocessor technology. These are all important. And deep experience with hardware, software, uh, understanding of design patterns, GNU project debugger, MATLAB programming is very important. Design patterns, microprocessor design. Uh, multi subsystem issues python programming is also very important in embedded area nowadays now uh, if you see a lot of uh, actually core companies is also demanding python so python is very useful if you are uh, if you are at least know the basics 
open source software, wireless technology, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I would definitely recommend Rajkamal text for learning all these things, everything except this MATLAB and uh, those things or Python. All the things where we have discussed right now is included in the Rajkamal text. If you could at least get a online version, you can definitely make use of it. Unified modeling language. Yeah, now the soft skills you need to have. Troubleshooting, full system thinking, communicate well with the words and graphics, deductive logic, problem solving, emotional intelligence, excellent, um, excellent teamwork, ability to network. These are the uh, behavioral skills. Proactive participation, um, understand how to research and find system development, basic understanding of project management, creativity, ability to, to learn outside of the com uh, comfort zone, patience. These are some soft skills. Now let's move on to the companies that are hiring. So um, most of the uh, automobile companies are also in requirement of embedded system engineers because they have in their cars on the automobile, um, you know, equipments. They need or incorporate a lot of embedded devices. So they also require, uh, like all the mostly or GMC, uh, all the automobile companies, Toyota or whatever companies there. You can also go uh, through their career website and you will find that they have requirement of embedded engineers uh, so that's one information i wanted to pass uh, to those and also these companies that i have listed out uh, hires frequently embedded system engineers robert bosch they have a numerous openings sometimes sometimes it is experienced um, candidate but you can always look their career site whether they hire any people with you know internship opportunities available if you have someone to refer you that will be a great thing vvdn solutions is one of my uh my one of my friends is actually working there so i know the company they hire a lot of embedded system people hcl technology uh with bistion honeywell tata consultancy service or tcs tata lx is actually a core company of electronics they hire even they have a lot of project opportunities if you are doing m tech or if you are doing um, b tech if you are if you want to do your final project you can always, always consult uh, them do they have their uh, do they have uh, you know opening for projects do they hire project trainees you can always ask them and that way you can actually get into that company also if you do their uh, if you do project there you can gradually go into the company because networking plays a crucial role Next is l &T, then the three unicorns, Qualcomm, Intel, and Dell. These companies also hire a lot of embedded system people. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, we have seen all the things like what are the skills needed, what are the key skills needed, software skills needed, certifications. We have seen the roles. We have seen actually the career path of how to become, you know, uh, till the uh, embedded architect, till that role. So it's always... Uh, a good thing if you are interested in embedded try to get some certifications or some trainings put that in your resume first look for some internships and then gradually get into the companies okay so that's uh, all about this video a lot of people was asking for this so i am really hoping that at least you could understand that what are the skills required for becoming an embedded engineer try to get these as i said if you want to purchase some textbooks I have used this. That's why I'm telling you Rajkamal is a great uh, option. It's not very costly. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you can always make use of the e-learning platforms. Uh, internet is a great resource. Make use of it. Yeah, that's it. If the video was useful, please hit the like button. Uh, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.